Hey everybody, we have double voted. I don't mean we've voted twice in the same election. I mean, we voted over two different things. First, Kaladesh won, and then Kaladesh best of three won out of uh, over Premier, which I'm happy about because uh, we have only 48 hours here, a couple days left to play best of three Kaladesh. I talk a lot about Q health from a game design standpoint. A lot of people get frustrated when the thing that they want to do is not available to them on the system. And it's because uh, Q health is incredibly important. Uh, more important than the variety of your game experience is the speed with which someone can go from deciding they want to engage with your game to actually playing. That's that, that's that wait time in the queue. The more cues you offer, the longer the average wait time is gonna be across all of them because you're, you're splitting your audience up more and more. And so of course you have to decide how much do you fracture your audience to uh, provide variety, which is really appealing to people, but without doing it so much that you create a queue health problem and start turning people away or getting people frustrated because they're not pairing up. And it looks like what they're doing with Kaladesh, uh, historically, when they would, uh, like, for example, did, uh, I don't believe that Amonkhet Remastered ever had a best of three draft. And I think people had an issue with that, especially because there were, there are cards printed that are sideboard only, like they're obvious sideboard cards that are there for constructed. And it was like, I think they learned their lesson from Amonkhet Remastered that, especially if they're going to reprint sideboard specific cards in the set, uh, you ought to have some level of best of three available for it. So it looks like their compromise this time around is, look, while the set is new, hot, and popular, and the queues are full, we're going to offer you an extra queue. We're going to give you that best of three experience. But then we expect that the after that initial week plus of, uh, of interest, because it's the new hotness, you expect Kaladesh uh, population density to taper off a bit. And as you lose that density to just people having tried it and now they're done, that's when you trim away one of the options so that your cues stay healthy. So that's a pretty good compromise, I think, to having it up the whole time uh, is, is, to, uh, is to do it that way and, and keep those cues healthy. Uh, if you want to keep your collection healthy, you can uh, give it checkups all the time at my friend and sponsor cardkingdom.com. You find them via my affiliate link in the panels down below or in the YouTube notes or in chat. And I uh, I really appreciate everything they do for the Magic community, uh, helping people build their collections, get what they need. They're the middle folk of the Magic universe. You know, a lot of cardboard slings around and you need to find people who can take and ship and bring it in and ship it out and keep that inventory high. And basically they just wanna be your one-stop shop. The The number one thing for Card Kingdom is, is that you can feel like you can go there and for the most part, just do the magic task you want. You know, get the thing, get the project done that you're trying to get done. Get that deck done, get that, get that cube done. And uh, of course, if they are missing anything, you know they're looking to buy it. So also check out their buy list. Best average buy prices in the industry, not even close. So whenever I'm looking to sell, if I'm not selling uh, on retail, I'm selling to Card Kingdom pretty much. So check out my sponsor. Thank you, Card Kingdom. Appreciate it. We're gonna jump in here and get to the old draft view. Looks like we're in the middle seat here. I have a storefront there, but it's very, it's kind of intentionally light right now. Um, I'm holding off on a big inventory push on that particular platform. So I, I sell a, a handful of cards there, but uh, mainly, and that's, you know, the, the fact that my presence there is so minor is one of the things that uh, you know, I've talked about this with Card Kingdom. I was very upfront. They're like, I, I am selling my own cards over here. Is that a problem? And they're like, it's not a problem if you don't promote uh, promote them. And because they know that I'm, <laughs> I am no, I am with my my uh, little presence on there. I am no threat to Card Kingdom. Close, seven, 
Seven in the queue. There we go. I think that's one of the sweepers in the set, right? So we could, our rare is a uh, pretty reasonable sweeper that if you start with, you know, you could really build around and keep in mind. Um, Marauder is pretty nice in the, the green, the green black counters deck, especially a lot, all the decks are producing plus one, plus one counters in some way, but, um, green, black, especially and when you can Etherborn Marauder and move say two or more counters, you got to watch eggs and basket issues. You know, you can put all your counters on here, have it get killed. And then suddenly you have no counters anywhere. But if you have a good, good feeling, this is going to survive. Suddenly you can have, uh, you know, uh, without too much work in like a green black deck, suddenly you've got a Baneslayer angel on your hands, you know, all right, slight exaggeration, but five, five lifelink is not out of reach. Uh, I think we start with a rare though. I like the Druid okay, but like uh, we could also take this, the Foundry Inspector, and try to get, um, you know, build around brown, basically, cheap brown stuff. But I think uh, Yeheni's expertise is good enough to start with here and see if we can start building around and keeping in mind. Um, Daring Demolition feels like a reasonable follow. There's no other black in the pack, which is, I mean, there is Lost Legacy, but this isn't really a, a playable limited card. Uh, maybe has some constructed potential, especially in these older formats. But it's it's uh, basically the uh, whenever you see this type of thing, like choose it, name a card, look at a hand and library, and then get rid of it. Like it's almost never worth it. I say almost because I guess if you're looking at the hand and you have lots of ways to look at the hand before you cast this, you can, but even then it's not good, right? So like your, your best stretches make this just barely imaginably playable. So just avoid that type of ability in limited and you're gonna be doing fine. We are gonna take Demolition to follow, uh, cuts black nicely. I do like this attune, uh, but there's, you know, this, this wasn't a particularly powerful pack anyway. Hey, and speaking of uh, things that, survive uh, the expertise we could just take the contraband kingpin on the strength of the four toughness given that that's kind of what we're trying to do but we might just want another demolition uh this format can have the too much removal problem where you have a bunch of pinpoint removal and they've done a bunch of go wide uh still i had a deck with five of these and i wasn't unhappy uh, blue, black, what is the archetype, right? I mean, usually this is going to be a signpost-ish, so it's like uh, artifact ETB. Uh, artifact sacrifice tends to be something that this form, th this color pair is doing. Um, the thing is, I wish this were powerful, but this isn't that great is the problem. It, it like has the four toughness that matches the expertise, and that's, uh, and that's e exciting in some ways, but I, I just don't think it's worth taking it over... Uh, an on-color demolition, whereas this is a signpost that you kind of know what to do with. So I don't know if we're going to get that other one back, but now I think we can take this over Die Young or Ether Chaser, also very good. What do you think, gang? Uh, let's take a look at this, though. Tezzeret's Touch, uh, one blue-black, uh, Enchant Artifact. Enchanted Artifact is a creature with uh, base power and toughness 5-5 five, five in addition to its other types. And when it is uh, put into a graveyard, you return it to your hand. So this is a strong, you know, if you can get a uh, some of the cheap one, two mana artifacts out or make a servo, right? Because it doesn't even say enchant non-creature artifact. It just says enchant artifact. So if you put this on a 1-1 one, one servo, it just becomes a 5-5. Five, five. I'm going to take it and uh, see if we can build around that. Eager Construct, Implement of Malice. Uh, Thriving Turtle is doing more energy than Artifact. I would rather do Implement of Malice. Implement of Malice starts walking around. That's not a bad thing. You play this on two, you Tezzeret's touch it, and now you've got a 5-5 five, five that when it dies, uh, you draw a card and it comes back to your hand. So like this is exactly what you want to be animating. Uh, there's also a rare that does some funky stuff, but again, more of a constructed thing than... It's not unplayable and limited, but I don't think we're heading in this direction as our build around. I'm going to look at Make Obsolete, though, too. That's just strong. I mean, the, I'm kind of... Like, in Best of Three, I almost want to pick this up. 
I think I am. Uh, Implement of Malice goes pretty late. I, I call Implement of Malice out because it is the kind of thing that I want to animate with this, but I'm also not going to uh, force it there. Daredevil Dragster is not amazing, but it's not bad. We could just take that. Uh, it's another thing where if we play this and Tezzeret's touch it, when it dies, um, oh, no, never mind. I, I thought when it dies, it was going to draw two, but you actually have to do the thing to get the two cards out of it. So never mind about that. But it would, it's still takeable, but there's also Hunt the Weak. And uh, if we end up in green black, Hunt the Weak is incredible because it put, does the counter thing. Uh, yeah, animated Colossus, that's funny. We're not going to take the Colossus. I think Hunt the Weak is a little not enough of a, like, as we're trying to figure out what we're doing, I think it's worth snagging that and seeing if that's where we're ending up. Here we have like a uh, Weldfast Engineer to continue, like we could add yet a, thir a third possible pairing to the black. We know we're black, right? And uh, we can take the Engineer to further hedge towards uh, which way we go. It does work. Wait. Well, yes, it, it works in terms of returning it, um, but I meant that uh, uh, if it dies otherwise, I think I'm with you on Serpent though. Like I, I wanna, I don't, it, it doesn't, I think it works in a way, but not the way I was talking about Rob, right? Um, Cause well, it's too late now to look at it anyway. Let's look at this plunder. I think this is good, right? I want the Renegade map though. Renegade map is uh, Tezzeret's Touch's good, good friend. But Skyship Plunder is too hard to pass, I think. Um, it, th this is, I mean, this is fine as a 2-1 flyer for two. And then it has this upside of just like uh, proliferating that's too hard for me to pass here for a Renegade map. I feel like we're doing pretty good in terms of uh, our, cult, you know, like leaning into the blue now is nice. Uh, I think pick... We're coming up on a pos like if that one four wheels, we we're in, I don't expect it to. I think people just kind of will at some point instinctively take a gold uncommon because there's nothing else in the pack. It doesn't even necessarily mean that blue black is not open if we don't see it, but if it does come back, then that's a great sign for us. Uh, I don't really see this card. I, I don't even, I, I can't think of an even like, Maybe if you're doing so much, like we had a deck yesterday that had so much energy and nothing to do with it, but even then, oh, you have to be so sure that you can make it to this point before you would uh, run this card. Like it, it's so do nothing that you have to be pretty confident, I think, before you run that. I'm gonna try and not run this turtle. We did not wheel the blue black again. Didn't expect to per se. And I'm gonna take card draw over like a generic five mana artifact. This is not amazing card draw, but if you end up with the five demolition deck, it's the Tezzeret's ambition that actually make that type of deck work. The five demolition deck, deck isn't good until you can um, get some value, get some attrition going through card draw. Uh, Trade Winds is okay. Workshop Assistant. Um, oh yeah, I kind of don't see the Night Market, but I should put it on my uh, my radar. I'll take a look at it. Puzzle Knot, um, I don't know if Hodge is around. Hodge was advocating for Puzzle Knot, and I was saying it's basically not playable, but I was trying to come up, I wanted to talk with Hodge about like, because there are decks where they're, they're converting energy so well. There are decks that, if they are converting energy to value so well that I could see running this, but boy, you would need uh, to really be doing that thing. Uh, Prophetic Prism is a lovely place to go with a Tezzeret's Touch as well. Prism on two, Tezzeret's Touch, make it a 5-5. Five, five. If they kill it, it comes back to your hand, you draw another card off it. Uh, what are we looking at if we're sticking blue-black and not taking a Prism? Die Young? No, we're not going here. I really feel like we are blue-black now. Uh, I don't think we're playing both these trade wins, but we did see a lot of good blue late, so... Uh, given that I really do think we're blue-black, I think we're just on Prism. I think it's the best card for this deck. Minister of Inquiries is not really a thing that I remember. I haven't seen anybody make this work in terms of I milled you out and you're dead. So we'll take a Prism. Trophy Mage doesn't get anything yet. Um, maybe with the Prism, I should just take the Cloud Blazer here. 
Uh, there's another demolition. But given that I would love to add like another prism to this deck, and I would love to get a uh, uh, one of those one mana land finding artifacts. Yeah, plus trade wins, right? Yeah, the Hungry Flames is, is calling me too, but obviously we're a little less red than anything else here. So I'm gonna spec on the Cloud Blazer. We might even wheel the Trophy Mage. If people don't have a three mana artifact, it does, it really is bad, right? It's actively bad, but it's an interesting hedge, but not uh, a better place to be than the Cloud Blazer, especially given that we have nothing to get with it right now. Uh, let's see. This uh, decoction module, is this playable for us? Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, get uh, energy. This is slow. I mean, if you can, if you have ETB effects and the tools to go long, this can be a game winning card in a deck like that, but it's awfully clunky. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I'm just taking a look at this and talking about it. I think it is salvager implement or ice over, but we don't want ice over because we are in black and we want to use black's excellent removal in this set rather than blue's medium at best removal. So taking defiant salvager here. Uh, this could help towards a green splash. Prism plus this is two sources of green. Uh, fourth Bridge Prowler. As a uh, sideboard card, this isn't terrible, but it's not really where we want to be. There's nothing else here, though. I kind of like uh, we're looking at either Nimble Innovator, which we really this is really. I mean, I know it replaces itself, but uh, this is no. 3-2 Elf from Zendikar. That three, that three power is a big difference for me in terms of what it can trade for and everything. So we're going to take Sanctum, Rare Draft, Slash, set us up for possible Splash. Right now there's nothing to Splash. Unlicensed Disintegration further suggests possible Splashing. At the cost of an on-color Subtle Strike, though. Do you just take the Subtle Strike? Just take the Subtle Strike since it, it plays with what we've got. Or do we continue to hedge towards future potential prism splashing? I'm going to say I can hedge on the disintegration here. Um, it's a little greedy, maybe. Cheese wants the strike. I'm going to be greedy because uh, I want more prisms. And I think we get to the point where we could end up with like three prisms and we play all of the, <laughs> we splash everything. Or not. But I'm taking a taking a risk there. We can just take P Fowl here. It's not super exciting, but it it does the thing. And uh, goggles, not a goggles deck. We could take select for inspection. Um, this also works with like a, a cloud blazer attack with a cloud blazer, and then select it for inspection. In fact, I think I will take first inspection over first P Fowl. These are both similarly kind of whatever, but the cloud blazer makes me want to hedge towards abusing that. Goggles is, I agree that Goggles is a, a good card in the right context. I really want more, I, I really want the uh, the inventor, the the artificer thing to pay off though. And we don't have a lot of that. We do have this era of innovation where, where again, we're, not, we're more, this, we're not really a an energy deck. Um, I think we're on live fast here. And I like an Ether Poisoner over a Die Young or a Night Market Aeronaut. Arrow is interesting, but I, I think we want to focus on the artifact side and the kind of the ETB thing here. Uh, I'm not going to take that implement. I don't like that implement very much. I want, if I'm going to take implements, I want the black implement since we can then Tezzeret's touch it on three. Whereas a three mana artifact, we can't then follow up on three with Tezzeret's touch. Yeah, Poisoner is, is, is good. I like it. Uh, I don't like anything here. I guess we can take a Puzzle Knot in case of uh, splashing red slash needing it in, uh, using it in the board. We can take Leave in the Dust as generically playable, or we can take Trophy Mage on the hedge. I think leaving the dust is medium enough that we take the mage on spec. Right now it's going in the board. We don't have anything for it, 
but we have a, another pack to go and could could find the the uh, couple of threes that make it worth it, or we find the uh, the three mana bomb rare sky sky motorcycle that's been following us around. This is crazy. Brawler still here is wow. Like maybe we maybe we back into red at this point. I might be a little low on creatures. Let's see. Yeah, only eight right now. Uh, you can get away with a pretty low count in blue-black because of the card draw removal thing, but it's uh, good to call that out, that we do need to keep our, our creature count in mind. Uh, servo schematic is an interesting one to Tezzeret's touch, but we're not really... I mean, you can... It, uh, it also works with Salvager to an extent. Chief of the Foundry is probably correct, though, right? Hat says Lord for him. I think Hat's right. This isn't doing amazing work in our deck, but it just, it's hard to have a deck in this format that doesn't justify including this at least. It just, you know, yeah, it's a mage target. That's a good uh, good point from uh, Chris and Rob. Three CMC exactly, which is why you start this in the board until you have have a reason. But it's also a good reason to pick up the chief there. Disallow. I mean, really, this is a fancy uh, cancel for us. So let's see what else there is. Maybe we have a better choice. Implement of Malice is here if we wanted to head that direction. Um, you can sometimes surprise people with the activated ability or triggered ability thing. And, and when you get them, you usually get them good. Like somebody is, ex nobody expects their activated ability or triggered ability to not work, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's 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 a, a a real thing that can happen, but it's a tiny upside over it just being a cancel. So we'll take Implement of Malice. Voyager could be splashed again we have the botanical sanctum and the prism and we are definitely blue what are we taking if not that not much else to take this isn't even that great for us we're not exactly doing any energy stuff you know heavily we could just take a leave in the dust um i feel like we're getting to the point where we're not going to see another prophetic prism now so yeah, the question is, is the is I guess is Screecher good enough? But it's such a such a vulnerable card. I'm just gonna take uh, the Voyager Splash. Every come on, one time Prophet Prism. Well, Unbridled Growth kind of does what we need, but we're splashing green, so we can't really justify this as our solution to color issues. We can take Die Young though. Over, you know, there's nothing here to take besides. I worry about the one toughness. I, I, I've I've already gotten burned by this card and it's one toughness, but I think it's the pick here, for example. Theorist, maybe we just need a two. Take Theorist as well. What do you think? One, three or two, one? You like Holler? Yeah, Holler, interesting as well. Certainly survives our, our rare at least. I'm going to take the Screecher, and uh, if another Hauler comes by, though, I might try it. I don't know if we're aggro. I, I think we're more a Serpent, you know, get to Serpent. Yeah, maybe the two drop would have been correct. We could take a Sky Gate if we want. Um, I don't think we want to, I don't know if we want a second Serpent, though, over, like, second Salvager. I'm gonna take Salvager. Uh, one reason to take Salvagers here is, uh, oh, Renegade map late is nice. Helps the splash, helps the uh, touch. We can take Fortuitous Find as somewhat of a late two for one, but I like the Renegade map here. Solidifies our ability to splash something if we want. Voyager probably we can throw in a forest in a sanctum, or maybe Cloud Blazer is still the thing we wanna splash the most. 
Subtle Strike or Implement of Malice or another opportunity to Serpent. I don't know how hardcore we are on the whole artifact thing as opposed to just having reasonable interaction. But since we have Demolition and Die Young already, I'm going to go with another implement and more reliably create a turn three touch scenario. True, it does make Screech a lot better. So here's the a Malfunction, a Leave in the Dust, and a Thriving Turtle. Maybe we just, we got it one Thriving Turtle. I don't know if we're playing multiples. We're probably playing that first just for, oh. Or I can take an Outland Boar because I'm talking too much. Let's do that. What do you think about that? Everybody like the boar? Good, good. Mastodon. I'm never really playing that rebuff. So I'm going to take the Mastodon. Tampering. I'll take tampering. We can splash just about anything. If we decide we really want a artifact removal, we can do it. And impeccable timing. Yeah, I think we're doing that. I kind of want to be greedy and splash, but maybe we just maybe we're just maybe we're just demure. Skygate is that the 04 defend? I can't bring myself to play that card, but maybe it's maybe this is the deck for it. I, I'm going on a lot of uh, heuristics from my previous experiences with the set, Rob, and I'm sure a lot of my uh, prior biases, whether correct or not, are coming to play in some of these late picks here. I'm sure I'm making some loose picks late based on adherence to deep-seated brain heuristics from my prior experience in the format. Yeah, what do we what what if anything are we splashing? I think Blazer is an incredible splash with the trade winds especially and the select for inspection. We've got unlicensed disintegration. It's probably just not going to happen because we have interaction. That's that's a job we're doing already. Uh, whereas Cloud Blazer is doing a job better than any, you know, we, we, yes, we have ambition, we have live fast, but this is doing that job incredibly. Uh, then we also have this Voyager. The benefit of the Voyager is that it comes with a free source, but the drawback of the Voyager is that what are we doing with energy? We've got Thriving Turtle. Is that like full stop? Poisoner can make some counters. Die young could kill some bigger things. Um, but that's it, right? So I think we have to be a grown up and cut the Voyager and the Sanctum. And then we talk about Blazon. Blaze on with Cloud Blazer. Hey, Ninja Rat, what's up? Right on. What did you end up in? You can see where we're at. Black green. Yeah, black wasn't flowing super well, but I got enough of it early in, in the first pack that I kind of locked into it. There was occasional green here or there, but that, that dried up pretty well, pretty fast too. Uh, we do have this Trophy Mage, but it only gets the Chief of the Foundry. That's not worth bringing in for that. Uh, let's see. This puts us at 1016. Again, uh, that's a little low, but if we have enough interaction and card draw, we can make it. It's not a little low. It's a lot low. Like, that should be a shocking number to a lot of you. And, and uh, if you find yourself with a number like this, you have to be able to explain how you're going to win an early game in which you're not hitting the board with creatures as reliably as your opponent. So as long as you have an answer to that question, how you know what's your plan given the low creature count, you can do it. It's still not ideal, but we have the answer of like we can run an ice over, not because it's amazing, but because uh, it's early. And if we fail to interact early, we can run that. But we also have a die young for that purpose. Um, Renegade map is effectively a land. We have more blue. I think we 
probably want to cut either a trade winds or a select for inspection. All right, let's do one. Let's split the difference here on that. Make obsolete. You could argue as a sideboard card. Here, let me get to deck building too. Um, you could argue this is a sideboard card, but as an instant, as an instant, it is a combat trick too. So I don't mind running make obsolete main, thinking of it as a combat trick, and it's one sided. If it if it shrunk everything, it would not be main deckable. But it's one sided instant your opponents. So as a an inverse white combat trick, uh, it's not the worst. We're not cutting any creatures, although the salvagers here end up being weakish. We're looking to one thing I like about the salvagers, though I, I, I meant to mention this as we were taking them. Salvager can sacrifice some three or less toughness to get to four plus toughness so we can expertise for value. So I, I really do like the salvagers and how they interact with the expertise and your creatures that don't survive the expertise. Uh, let's see. So that leaves us with one cut, in my opinion. Where are we cutting it? It could be... Uh, another one of our bounce spells. It could be a card draw spell that we like less than the Cloud Blazer. We've got a turtle. I'm, I'm resident to cut the turtle because it does do a job we're looking for, which is keeping us from dying early. I, this is not an amazing card at all. It has really just one job. Show up in our opening hand and keep us alive. But uh, let's note that also with one attack, it does also survive an expertise. That's another reason I like keeping it. So I think I'm going to keep the turtle acknowledging that it is pretty underwhelming. And I am going to look for our worst spell. I want to keep our creatures at 10. And on that front, let's do it this way real quick. Our other energy payoffs are die young. But itself, it's without any help, it's minus two, minus two. So I'm kind of thinking of our energies as self-contained. This is a minus two, minus two. This is a one, four. And then uh, we had, we did have one more. What was it? Uh, oh yeah, Poisoner. This makes a one, one, right? So like each of our energy cards does its thing for itself and that's good enough. In, you know, as how I'm looking at it. And then if we keep live fast, we get an extra two energy to throw around somewhere. Mostly mediocre, exactly. So, like, maybe we just cut the live fast. Um, if we're trying to survive, maybe the life penalty is too harsh and the energy, the two energy is not doing enough. Although a couple extra energy, making a 2-5 turtle is a big deal. Uh, killing a 4-4 uh, a four -four is a big deal, right? So maybe it's worth it and we just cut the ambition if we cut one of those. But looking over here again... I'm going to say our likely cuts are one of the cards that I'm putting over here on the right. Include. I think we want both of our implements of malice. Again, um, it's a uh, it's a thing that Tezzeret's touch is good with, and it's a thing that's good to sacrifice to salvagers to get them to uh, expertise out of expertise range. So I want to keep both of those. We need our prism. Maybe it's just the ice over, but it, it does. Again, it, it solves that problem of surviving early that I like. It has a job to do, and that's, hey, we're getting attacked. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We also have, uh, we have, we care about trying to get serpents down early. So, yeah, I'm close here. I'll put ice over on the list. I'm going to keep all of these. I think, I don't know, I even, die young. No, I think Die Young, we need, like, if we're cutting a, a two-drop removal spell, it's ice over. So I think I'm going to ask you all what we're cutting. So this is a poll to, to decide what to cut, because magic is hard, so I'm going to make you all do it for me. Give you 40 seconds to tell me, uh, select, ice, trade for trade wins, live for live fast, and ambition for Tezzeret's Ambition. And we're cutting whatever wins the voting, unless it's a, if it's a really close race, I'll do some, we might do a runoff, but I also don't want to waste too much time with this. Just curious what you all think is the worst include.
Midnight Oil is playable but weird, if I recall correctly, Ninja. It's not unplayable, uh, but it's definitely, you got to read it, understand what it does, and I think it's about timing. Like, you got to you gotta time it right. It's a, it's a card that, uh, that requires very careful cast timing, but if you time it right, it's good. All right, with uh, Liv beating out the competition, we don't need a runoff. We'll just cut that. And do we want one planes or two? We're only getting the Cloud Blazer. We got Renegade Map, Planes, and Prism. If we don't, if we, uh, so we got three sources if we don't, four if we leave it in. I'm gonna say three is good enough for the Blazer. And there we go. I suppose a second black is what we want. We want more black. Uh, turtle is the thing we want on one, but double black shows up on four all over the place. So we're going to add an extra swamp. I'm going to check my redemptions. Sorry, I haven't had my re rewards window up, so if there's been a lot of redeeming, I've ignored it all. Sorry. But here I am. Oh, looks like there wasn't anything anyway. All right. I mean, I was on duty the whole time, ready at a moment's notice. Okay. I'm going to switch these then. Okay, Trannel has... Ah, I hate that. Get back in that deck. Kaladesh. Okay. We also get a Plains. I guess I'll give you a Avon Plains. This is a nice cloud formation. And then you wanted uh, Paquette Swamps. Oh, yeah, you get a you get an island, I guess. Is You get a... One of these sweet islands. Let's go with this one. That's pretty. And then Paquette Swamp. Looks like we got two Paquette Swamps. I'm going to go with this one. Any good names out there? Let's see. We are experts. We have expertise. We are salvagers. Um, demolition expert. It's like Charlie's Angels, right? Yeah. Sure. All right. How do you think we're going to do on this one? Par pole incoming. Nice. Ridge scale Tusker is excellent. Yeah. Uh, expertise was our pack one, pick one. Yep. Boo earns. Uh, replace any of these with a swamp and we're pretty happy, but can't keep this. All right, this is better. We're going to keep, and I think we're going to just ditch the old trade winds here. Everything else is interactive and board building or card drawing. Nice, we got Blazer and the Prism to cast it. Which maybe we means we use the Renegade map for a swamp. Malicious. Well, I guess we're not using it for a planes. That much is clear. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, curve out Plunder into Screecher and... Uh, Actually, I guess we play the swamp, and we would even be willing to pitch the planes with the 
the prism on the horizon. So I'm gonna play swamp in case we are made to discard and then I'll uh, discard the planes. Uh, Big Scary Dave, you might actually check out um, the original Duels of the Planeswalkers, which is still available out there. The original Duels app, which is kind of the, the precursor to Arena in terms of quick play, authentic digital magic, uh, that had a really good tutorial system, so keep that in mind. Foundry Screecher... We don't have much going on with the Plunder's extra ability here. Uh, we don't have any energy yet. We don't have anything in hand that's going to get a counter going. I'm hoping that Oppo will trade off for the Plunderer because of its ability, that it looks like it's something that they might want to stop us from doing. Uh, although, and now uh, Prophetic Prism, now I'm happy that they haven't made us discard yet. I, uh, I might even keep the Screecher for discard. I'm going to start by attacking with the Plunderer, though, and see if they want to make that trade. They don't. Um, definitely playing the planes. I'm debating uh, Salvager, Prism, Screecher. We might even just ditch the Prism, like play Scout, play a uh, Screecher here, and then be prepared to ditch the Prism if they fire off their implement. I think that makes sense. Yeah, Screecher and Race, and I'm not cracking the Renegade map yet. We don't actually have any Revolt. This is a great Revolt card, but we might draw our uh, Tezzeret's, you know, Tezzeret's Animation Enchantment, make this a 5-5. Five, five. Of course, we have the Prophetic Prism to do that with, but this isn't out there. If we, if we literally draw the Animate Artifact, we'll be so happy to have this map ready. Also, a lot of these times, a lot of times with the things like the map, you, your heuristic is to do this at the end of your opponent's turn. But since this just brings, uh, for no mana, this brings a land to your hand, you actually generally do this uh, main phase. Uh, it's, it's playable in almost anything, D, but it is actively good in anything that values artifacts on the battlefield, artifacts entering the battlefield, sacrificial artifacts, or three color. So yeah, I am going to uh, ditch the prism here, though. It's the least important card in our hand. And now, uh, with this island and the map, we do have Blazer next turn. Uh, if we go island, play Salvager, we expose ourselves to having this discarded, but I think we have to do that. Uh, it's a risk we're going to take. We can't cast it now, so our only our only other choice is to like keep a bunch of stuff in our hand to protect against discard, but that just does not seem wise. Just to be able to make, because then you're discarding. Yeah. Any anyway, point is too risky or uh, too much left on the table, too much left in hand to prevent the risk of this being discarded. We have to take the risk of... Uh... Yeah, that's true. Uh, the trouble is right now we want to... I'll do that. Scott Martin says we could have salvagered, eat map, then give salvager more counters with plunderer. Uh, it doesn't guarantee us a blazer next turn, though. If we draw a basic land off the top, we're absolutely doing what you're, what you're talking about. Salvager is almost unplayable in a deck that does not have a good reason to run it and good re there's different good reasons to run it one of the reasons we're running it is we have the rare minus three minus three to everything so for example if we drew minus three minus three to everything we could sack stuff to the salvager to make it a four four and then wipe the board and be the only one with something left so that's one of its jobs in our deck uh, we do have renegade map and prophetic prism that can be eaten up uh, and we are making here and there a spare servo that you can throw on as a counter. One of the reasons to run this card in general is if you're doing red, black, and you have a hijack, you're stealing your opponent's stuff. Really powerful to steal your opponent's thing and uh, and sack it. We'll see if we can get away with that maybe some point uh, before this format is done for us. 
But it, you don't just throw this in any deck. You need to explain why this is in your deck. And I can explain why, and it's still not great, honestly, but we have what we have and we're not cutting more creatures, so. All right, Poisoner means we are not gonna do, um, we're not necessarily getting through with the Plunderer anyway. Uh, we can offer the Plunderer first though. So I'm gonna start there, see if they wanna plunder. And I can even offer, again, we'll offer the Salvager. The Salvager has some utility for us, but if they wanna trade the Foundry creature for it, that's fine with me. So I'm gonna start, oh wait, sorry. Uh, we I don't wanna just um, get eaten by the Garrison though. So Garrison as a crew two can eat the Salvager, but the Plunderer can still attack. So I'm gonna start with an attack with the Plunderer. Leave Salvager back. And I was fine with that because then we get to clear the air for the Cloud Blazer anyway. Get it? We need to clear the air after the Cloud Blazer. Dude, the RA is coming! Gotta watch my clock. I'm a talker and a slow player, so it all combines to make me extra slow when I'm streaming. And best of three, that can actually matter. If you're uh, wondering what might have haste that could get you in this format, and they're playing black, you gotta remember Yeheni. Yeheni can come out and hit pretty hard. I was going to use Die Young on the Colony, but I think we're just going to go for a race here and kill Yaheni. Can even just block with Salvager, I suppose. Um, oh, but they can sack another creature. Yeah, uh, we're not going to do that then. We'll. Uh, Indestructible actually doesn't stop the uh, Die Young, which is really nice here. But we gotta take this. One of the weird rules of magic that you get used to, but for new players is one of those, wait, what? Where uh, indestructible cannot be destroyed, does not stop minus two, minus toughness. Like indestructible does not help you if your toughness is zero. Right, it's some of the weirdness of magic rules, but. All right, I'm gonna keep playing lands. We have card draw and we have big stuff. So, um, yeah, we can play Poisoner. Are you worried about, because if they go for a pump in response, we can put more, um, more energy into it. That's what Scott is saying. Because you can overpay, right? We don't. Uh, so if they respond, we can uh, pay four. But I think we probably have to decide before they respond. And I'm not going to overpay. Like, what do they? What could they have? I like. There's the plus X plus X in red, but that's for attackers. So I th I'm just going to. Subtle Strike, that's fair. Maybe I could have gone three to play around Subtle Strike. Fair point. Well, Pyro Helix doesn't stop our spell from doing anything, though. Why would killing our creatures matter? I don't understand that. Oh, yeah, right. They kill. Got it, got it, got it. They kill us to make... But no, it just gives it indestructible. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. Killing our creatures would help, too. You're right. Complicated rare, sorry. Good get good work sussing it out, gang. We took the risk though and it worked out, but there were some things that could have made that uh, unfortunate. Maybe I don't know what's correct. So did you so like it seems like the most they could have done is one more counter. So probably correct there to use an energy just to ensure that thing dies. 
Like it worked out for us, but I think it was, um, it was super important for this to die, such that I think we should have overpaid by one to play around the possibility of a counter. Basically, it costs us a, uh, having a having a servo, and that's not that big a deal. Well, maybe I'm not racing here. I thought we were racing, but now it's like... You're on defense, Ryan. Especially with those draws. Boo Werns. Are we just dead? Let's see. We've got a block on the monitor, but if we do that... Yeah, we can block the monitor and take three or four from Colony or uh, Garrison. But that's what we've got. Yeah, right? War Furnace is a tough spot. If we really think that it was all about making sure this guy was dead, then we should have overpaid. Was that... Oh, yeah, did it decide on resolution? Uh, maybe I'm missing the whole window that we had there. I felt like they could still respond after we chose, but maybe not. Maybe I completely missed how it even... <laughs> Worked. No attacks, though. We at least have a plan to not die. Yeah, now I'm confused. Now we've got uh, Frack saying could have decided after they did something, but my feeling at the time was that they could have responded, that we were putting something on the stack, so... I already forget. What is our plan from here? Our plan from here is actually uh, drawing our sweeper. So... Oh, now our plan is to die. Uh, so what I wanted to do... Well, no, we're not dead because we can chump. I mean, we can go to one. Uh, trouble is now that our... our n trouble of going to one is that our sweeper no longer saves us. It was a plan, but the Alley Strangler... So before the Alley Strangler showed up and they could attack with three, my plan was going to be to double block the colony to kill it because then our out to minus three to everything was clean. As it is, we don't have that option anymore. So we're going to do this to survive and then... Uh, and then see? But we're basically dead because this goes to any target too. So unless we have life gain I'm not thinking of, we are pretty darn dead. Yeah, there you go. Why not block the 4-4? Um, yeah, I should have done that, I suppose. Because uh, I was thinking of uh, trying to trade, but I wasn't trading on the other one. So it... We were just dead, 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 dead. But yeah, should have blocked the 4. Uh, okay. Thought we were in a good spot, and then it all fell apart. They are very susceptible to our sweeper, though, so that's good to know. Another trade wins. Let's look at... Again, we also could splash outside of white if we felt it was worth it, but again, I just don't think there's anything there for us. And I don't want to do anything more to lose life. They're pretty aggressive. Yeah, I already have one trade wins and I have a select for inspection. I don't know why I'm bringing in a, a, another trade wins. What are we bringing it in for? And yeah, but could a, is a second trade wins good? We have so few creatures and this requires an, a creature of ours and we want it to be good. I'm not going to over, I'm not going to overload our bounce. So. And I could bring in a third bounce spell, basically. So that means I think we're just running it back unless we want to gain life and get some extra energy. Yeah, Mastodon. Maybe Mastodon is worth playing here. We do our we are playing a little white. It does cheapen the serpent. I could even maybe take one salvager out and go for Mastodon. 
or keep salvager in and even ditch like a select for inspection. Let's try this. Well, some people like adding bounce. I have reduced ourselves by one bounce spell. We'll see how that plays. Well, we're gonna keep this and hopefully we, if we can find one of our cheap artifacts, great. But our worst case is uh, we can poison her on two, attack on three, make a one, one, and at least make it a five, five. We won't be able to attack with it that turn. That's not a bad sequence. Uh, I brought in the Mastodon. Ooh, Plunderer is interesting, but... Well, actually, okay, I'm going to take it a little slow because we can play Plunderer now, play Poisoner next turn, and actually plunder ourselves and start increasing our uh, energy. So I'm going to do that. And then we can set ourselves up, hopefully, for a spot where we are casting this when our 5-5 has effective haste. That's a much better time, because then you basically get in for your 5, and then if they have removal, fine, but at least you got a nice smack in. I'm going to drop Poisoner and increase our energy. If they do fo force a, uh, a discard, probably the Trade Winds here is going to be a better, the best discard. Right. That's one reason I'm also holding off. Math points out that if the, we put Tezzeret's Touch on a 1-1 one -one Servo token and they answer, they kill it... We don't draw the token, so we lose out on some of the value of this card. Uh, stuck on land here a bit. We can send in the poisoner though now and go ahead and make that um, make that servo. Might have to do the Tezzeret's touch on servo thing. Yeah, we could just play Salvager. Yeah, let's just do that. Uh, the, one of the reasons to keep the Salvager is that Salvager is that it's also a legit consideration for what we discard to opponents' implements. So that's one reason I was considering keeping the Salvager in hand. But with if they're going to let us make a second servo with the Poisoner, then I'm liking the Salvager more, and then I would discard the Trade Winds. So let's play the Salvager. And there's an argument for even eating this and making it big right now so that it uh, stays out of range of certain red removal spells and even uh, live, uh, die young, right? So I'm actually gonna do that. We do need servos to make serpent cheaper, but I'm I'm focused on our immediate game plan. I don't even see the ser the serpent as being on the menu anytime soon. I just want to focus on uh, winning, doing what we can with our low land count to make this work. We can also pitch the cloud blazer here, but there's not really great use for this trade winds. We don't want to bounce anything. I mean, we could bounce this and make more energy, but that's not super important. And we could also ditch the Serpent, knowing that it is kind of far off. And this is our interaction. But I feel like if we can cast these, we're going to win. Uh, I would dump Serpent before I dump Blazer, I think. Um, it's not... This is a tough choice. But I suppose this is castable. And... I'm going to ditch Serpent. Blazer, of course, is also far away because we don't even have our white source yet. But if we can get there, then suddenly the trade winds, having the trade winds is great, you know. 
this is all kind of future tripping anyway, right? Like, what are we what are we doing coming up? How is this going to play out into the into the future here? Don't even need the island out yet. Uh, we could. I'm going to send in. So we make another servo, and then plunder the sal plunder the salvager. Or uh, yeah, make the salvager bigger. Well, if, yeah, I could just attack in and, yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's just make the salvager bigger via plunder. That's fine. We don't need another uh, token right now. Trouble is, uh, if we want to do Tezzeret's touch, we need a 1-1. One, one. Attack and bounce. Hmm, that's interesting, too. Suggestion to like go ahead and send in the poisoner and then uh, what engine do you want to keep going? Oh yeah, you want but also but if we plunder the salvager, we are not getting more energy anyway. So that's the reason to keep this back. Like we could salvager this turn. I'm gonna do it this way. Keeping the poisoner back right now. Hmm, if they go for killing the plunderer, I think we go ahead and save it. Yeah, let's let's do this. I think we were forced into that. It wasn't an amazing play, but it prevented a pretty bad play against us. I mean, a pretty bad for us result. So we had some other things we were thinking about using that for, but that seemed correct. Well, all right then. I'm going to go Plunderer again. We could play uh, Chief, but I want to get uh, get counters on this. Although, why did I do that? They're just going to kill. Uh, that was a mistake, actually. Although it does use up their turn, but I'm just throwing it away to the uh, to the puzzle knot to the point that maybe what we do here is just sack it to the Salvager. I think I'm going to do that because I'm throwing this away. Otherwise, I just threw this away. Might as well get some value out of it. And then we can attack now. Not my finest play, though. Although, what would I have done if not? I guess we do just play this the foundry there, if I could go back. Uh, but I think... I don't even know if it's a... Yeah, it's a punt in that I would have done this, but basically we just strand this in our hand for a long time until we get him to use this somehow. Right, that's the thing. I mean, you can you can argue it was a punt. It's just like, but it, it's classically the punt of thought, not the punt of execution. It was a punt not to call out the fact that playing this into a puzzle knot is fraught with peril, you know? And uh, we couldn't get this big enough. Too bad uh, Chandra's Revolution is going to work for them, but we at least get Foundry next turn. We can make a 5-5 five, five out of it eventually. Yeah, you can decide what a punt is, but the, the only mistake... The, the real mistake there was not thinking about the connection between the puzzle knot and the one toughness better than we did. All right, now we have Chief of the Foundry. If we draw a basic land, we can go implement and touch it up to the point maybe we just go implement here and so then we get to touch it next turn no matter what. Yeah, let's do that. Should also surprise them pretty good if they send in with the weld fast. Let's see how they go with this. Although we may not be able to send in ourselves here. <sighs> I 
But I think touch is all we got. And then uh, we do have good blocks if they don't have removal. Love to threaten them, but we can't really send in for five and take this crack back. Take a crack back for nine plus one on the puzzle knot? No. Gotta hope, hope that our animated implements hold here. Yeah, they are pausing. An attack like this suggests subtle strike. So now I'm thinking, well, it might not even be a solid strike. It could be the Helix. They have uh, one damage here, so they only need one extra damage in hand for this to take this out. We got to block the Engineer, though, since that's what's creating the uh, large amount of power. But the fact that they're sending in no problem probably means we're starting no one on this mat on this draft, because I bet they can take out our implement. We'll get some value out of it, though. Okay, that's not bad yet. I mean, it's not great, but we don't have a dead implement. Okay, there you go. There it is. They had to use a bunch of resources for it, though. We do get all this back and drawing cards and making them discard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But are we just dead? Okay, maybe not. We got six total mana. We can get three here and two here. And then have a couple of uh, things to block with, which is what we need first and foremost. Let's take a look at what's coming. Make obsolete. Do we like that? Yes, we do. Our top the top of our library takes care of squad and token, so we really want to find a way to kill this engineer if possible. They might just send the servo, in which case we'll take. Ah, sending everything. All right. Um, I think we do this and cross our fingers on the rest. I mean, we might just die here, but I feel like I can't play around their hand. I have to play like, although we have seen like, Strike doesn't even win though, right? Strike gets us to one. We saw the uh, red thing that makes them plus two. So like they could have 10 points of trample here. If they have 10 points of trample, we need to block with the foundry or we're dead. Um, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, they showed us. They can make 5-1 trample, 5-1 trample. So we have to block here. Blocking here means we survive 5-1 trample. I believe. So that was harsh. But we had to do that. And we still get this. And let's do this. Unfortunately, I thought they'd probably have a land there, but now we have a make obsolete. Um, I am going to do it on their turn, but I'll do it on their upkeep. Why I want to do it on their turn because it reduces the power of the alley strangler. It doesn't kill it, but at least it reduces our damage. Uh, the issue is that if this is a subtle strike, they could have one of these survive. Yeah, but I think they would have used it there, right? Wasn't that a spot where they could have used a subtle strike effectively? So I think I'm going to play like they don't have it. And then uh, do it here.
How about our rare? We never get our rare. Oh my God, how beautiful would that have been to, to draw our expertise right now? Uh, we are still not dead, but man, expertise would have been such a hot top deck there. Oh yeah, we're not eating. We're, we're just dead, right? Double menace. Blah. Well, you know, gang, I'm not happy that I didn't consider the impact of playing the two one. But honestly, I like how we played this overall. We really, we really thought about our outs and uh, and gave ourselves a chance at them. So I guess if we had ditched the Cloud Blazer instead of the Gear Serpent, we might have had another uh, creature to play. But um, I don't think that actually mattered here, Razor, and I don't want to be too results-oriented about it. We basically said, look, for uh, for us to cast, we're, we're deciding whether we're keeping Cloud Blazer or Serpent. Both of them needed a lot of help to cast. Uh, and we took the risk on the one that if... If we came through on casting the Cloud Blazer, I think it would have won us that game. Uh, if we came through on casting the Serpent, I think they would have uh, still menaced around it. And, I, and I'm not sure we would have had the time at any point to spend all that mana to even get down the 5-6. But if we had lucked into a source of white, drawing extra two, creating a blocker in the air, not that they were attacking in the air, but creating a 2-2 that could block and gaining two life, I think could have been game swinging. So even though it didn't work out for us, again, that's where I'm trying to be uh, results, not be results oriented here, be decisions oriented and be overall uh, okay, at least with the, the fundamental decisions we came up with to find a plan and play to it. All right, well, oh, this record is all wrong. Sorry. The plan is to come back from 01 to win a couple of matches. All right, this looks good. Just need to find, uh, I'm going to play the prism if we don't find a third land, because we really want to find a third land for the turn three touch. Turn four foundry, attack for six, six attack for five, then attack for six. All right, there's our land. So now we can say whatever uh, we want. Do we want that? I guess I'd rather attack with the implement of malice. Don't you agree? I think we want to. I think we want to touch the malice more than the prism. Basically, yeah, I think I like the implement. Right, prism has ETB value, but uh, malice has death value. Yeah, but I like getting this back better. Doing this, getting this back is is better to me. Maybe it's uh... there's pros and cons for each of these choices. I see what you're saying, math. Maybe you're maybe you're seeing something that makes it super clear that I'm not. But uh, now. I like a devastating select for inspection on the tapped fretwork colony. And then um, probably Screecher to get going in the air. We don't even need to do that now, though. Let's go. Uh, let's start with an attack. No need to show him anything before we attack. Ah, no! I even looked, ah, oh, I think they were looking for the malice. Darn it, well, well, well. I figured, uh, I, I just did it quickly because I figured auto tap would have me and then auto tap had this instead, ouch. Eh, it's not even a punt. I'm gonna try and trade here and, um, and then bounce here and we're gonna be so fine. 
I know we're getting trampled, but it's okay. They think this fretwork colony is getting amazing, but it's gonna get inspected. And this is fine too. So let's go here. Let's not mess around and <laughs> do this. Let's do this. Ambition. I think we want to keep ambition. We're at 11. That should be enough time to make that valuable to us. And here I like prism, malice. Just we're not under pressure from their hand and I want to max our mana. Yeah, we can Serpent next turn. That's another good call. No, we didn't miss, Rob, because in order to get that damage you're talking about, the uh, creature has to untap, and then it doesn't target it anymore. But I hear you. Normally, we want to try and do things during upkeep, but we couldn't. We can't do this as an upkeep trick. Yeah, we could have him attack. I just don't want him to draw cards. I, I, maybe against maybe against these colors that was totally free, but my heuristic was to do it before draw. So that's the heuristic I was going with. Um, let's see, we go one. So we can just play the serpent out and make him have it. We can also just go poisoner foundry though. And poisoner is a nice deterrent. I, one of the things I'm trying to do here is extract any additional removal they have left in their hand before we expose the serpent. Math likes the serpent now. I'm going to go with uh, my gut of poisoner and foundry and see if we can't get him to use removal ahead of the serpent. Foundry also makes the serpent cheaper. We could find another land or uh, a uh, one mana artifact off the top and continue to chip away at the serpent price tag. I know playing a one-mana artifact keeps it neutral, but it's still something we might draw. Um, I'm still totally on board for trading here. That's why I wanted to play the Poisoner. I'll trade for anything. Make obsolete is super interesting. Uh, I can send the foundry and if they block, we obsolete for value. And if they don't block, we still serpent. So we kind of have a free attack here and see if we can punish. One likely occurrence is blocking with seed sculptor and not Rishkar, but I'll still do it. If we do that, they're down to just Rishkar and a, a creature that we know about, but they can't really play effectively in this spot. So let's see if they want to take the bait. If they double block, well, they kind of get us, but then at least we get, uh, I don't really, yeah, I get, uh, we can still cast the Gear Serpent. Even if we lose the Foundry to a double block, we still cast the Gear Seeker. And I can't, would you double block if you were Oppo? I can't imagine, I wouldn't, so that's why I'm doing it. I'm not oppo, so maybe they will, but I wouldn't double block if I were oppo. So that's why I'm doing this. And we could even implement here, uh, we still, with the foundry around, we still get uh, the serpent next turn. It lets us do something with our mana, it draws a card. I am going to do it. We can still cast Serpent uh, next turn. Ooh, and there's our Renegade map for extra, extra casting next turn. Not surprised they ditched the fret work. Pretty easy ditch, really, but I don't mind it not being out, you know? Die young. We could just straight up kill Rishkar here. Uh, but I like doing that after the Serpent. Let's play the Serpent and um, cast a Die Young probably next turn.
We could sack the map for uh, filtering. And we haven't played a land yet. Let's go get our planes. That's true. If I had, yeah, I could cast this turn. Let's do it. And still cast it with the prism. So let's, uh, let's get our planes anyway, even though we have the prism. If we decide we want to sack this, then we have our white source still. Uh, but I do like that idea. Let's just go here and pay four. That was a great turn. And we have ambition. Defiant Salvager is why I wanted the planes, because now we can eat the prism. Uh, but I think we should start with... Well, maybe we, don't, maybe we can just go Salvager, eat prism here. And then that's an okay turn. Because we can also... We could also go unblockable. Should we just try and clock him twice? Maybe I'm overthinking it, and we just go... Um, unblockable... Chump, unblockable win. Hmm. Both have trample. So if they... That puts us dead to a single removal spell, which I don't like. So I think I'm going to go Salvager. Um, sack Prism. Oop. And pass. I'm going to play it conservatively here. I don't like putting ourselves in a spot where one removal spell is dead. This can't block, right? Okay, that's good. All right, I actually like ambition into probably construct into having all sorts of options that turn after. I think we can go ambition, construct, and then probably start cracking with the serpent, right? And I don't even need to worry about uh, mana, although what, what might be draw for two mana? What do we need to leave open? Thriving Turtle, Ice Over, Skyship Plunderer. Everything we're looking at is blue, not black, so I'm going to leave uh, an island up. Uh, can't scry first, need to draw land to play the construct. No, no, I, I need the, I need to draw land. <laughs> land was the plan. Now we don't want to draw land. Nicely, we can actually play Thriving Turtle and make uh, Serpent unblockable next turn. So we really do get to start executing our game plan now of closing out this game. We could have gone for a two swing win, but we left ourselves exposed to dying to a single removal spell. And I only do that if we can't win otherwise, you know? Try to play around the single removal spell loss if you can. And it's a lot of trample. There is still some risk here, but I do feel like we have the double block situation now where we can go Thriving Turtle. And uh, with three blockers against eight trample with three, four, five, six, seven, eight toughness, I think we can put them on the two turn clock now. At least this is not dead to single removal spell territory. teaching me humility. I thought we had this. I thought we had this. Uh, 
Why would you have swung without the ability, Math? Like, we literally had him on a two-turn game-ending play. Like, I don't know. I, I like putting him on a two-turn clock and making him have a freaking mythic to do anything about it. Of course, they could have drawn, like, Daring Demolition and also killed it. But it, it, it was especially painful off of a mythic, okay? I'm going to say no blocks, though. Maybe. Maybe we, I'm just complaining. Maybe I'm complaining ahead of winning, but that sure hurt. So let's see. We go trade wins on our turtle... Replay it, sack it to... Uh, trouble is they can... Uh, no, we go... We attack and we trade wins whatever they block, right? Okay. Yeah, looks like we got him. Yeah, we can bounce land. It, the, the, or whatever they block. It doesn't matter. The point is... Uh, oh, no, we, we do need to clear blockers. Right, right. Bounce land. Okay, uh, then we go... Here... And here. Almost taught humility by a Johnny, but then uh, chat brought me back from the brink. Um... What do we want to do about this here deck? Splashing white for the unyielding. Other than that, straightforward uh, green-black counters. Fretwork. They're pretty aggro. Got Rishkar. Couple Malfus, right? Yeah. Well, I'm glad when it does raid in because it means you're gainfully employed and prioritizing things accordingly. Uh, any thoughts? Any? Let's see. We have impeccable timing. Oh yeah, I like the uh, the mastodon, especially against green. If you remind me after this match, I would like to make this switch more permanent. Maybe over again, salvager. I I think I don't like cutting creatures though. I think we want to still cut uh, the either ice over or the select for inspection. I'm gonna go. Are they sacrificing? Do they have sack outlets? If so, maybe we take out that ice over. I don't see actual sack outlets, so I think I'll keep in the ice over and ditch this select. Implement is tempting as well. We do have five things that uh, Tezzeret. On three, we could probably get away without an implement. That's true. You know, four is still pretty solid to get something ahead of a turn three touch. And yeah, actually, I'm going to do it that way. I think uh, resetting those um, colonies are effective too. Let's do this. One implement down. If we get an inspection in our opener and the artifact animator and no other artifacts, that'll be sad. But that's about the only time I'd be really sad with that. There's the select, so... Can we even keep this? No black yet. And we don't really do anything. We, If we find a swamp, we have a nice early defense against... Yeah, I think we got a mulligan. Sad, but true. And here we get to keep this and let go of Salvager. We don't want two. Looks like it's minus is swords. So could risk a profit... Prophism, a prophetic prism in case of the animation spell, but that's pretty light chance. We would rather get a plunderer going. It'd be nice to get some energy going before the die young so that we could increase it with plunderer. Well, well, well. 
I guess we're going with a prism to start and not looking good for us, gang. Uh, this into this is a heck of a start for Oppo. But not blocking, so I'm attacking. Yikes, that is aggro. Did you see what just happened to us? We are so dead. That's like constructed level curve out here from Oppo, and we are just going, what? Hello? Anybody? Now we gotta like salvager and eat these just to make a 4-4 that can threaten a 3-2 and a 3-3. Although we can do it on just salvaging the prism and still make a 4-4 off the plundering. Uh, we're ahead 1-0 in this match. Anyway, I think it is Salvager. Uh, eat Prism. We can go find. Do we play a land this turn? I don't think we did, right? Oh, no. Yeah, we didn't, because this is their, their, our four, their four, our five, right? I'm going to go Prism. And can make it a 5-5. Five, five. It's not enough to kill that, though. Just trying to decide if we're mapping now. I think we are. Oh, we did play a land. I guess I didn't read that right. Oh, maybe it's because they're a turn ahead. I was thinking of us being a turn ahead, but I got that part backwards. Good thing, though, uh, at least the Salvager play is working. It's holding back Scrounger and Revolutionary, which is the point. If they'd had something like Subtle Strike, this game would already be over. Okay, not a bad draw, because we get to make a Thriving Turtle, get some more energy. Then we can die young something. After we can plunder our energy, get five, and potentially kill the Outrider, which is the only thing getting through right now. So I'm I'm down for that. Let's try and stabilize with that play. stable. We could just eat the turtle and get to a 5-5. What's the turtle doing? Basically nothing, especially without the uh, without the energy. So, I like 5-5. Five, five. The other thing you could do is chump. You could stop the druid attack, but I don't think that's worth it. I think I'd rather get a 5-5 five, five here. It makes something like Subtle Strike still be a trade, for example. Protects against Hunt the Weak, as Scholar calls out. There's a lot of subtle things that an extra counter here does for us in terms of our, our actual stability against the range of possible draws from Oppo. Hey, how about killing the uh, counter holder before this thing comes down, huh? Ice over. We can't eat art enchantments, right? No. Artifact or creature. So, Screecher. Screecher creature. Uh, we could send the plunderer and say trade for it or the salvager gets bigger. I should have figured that out before playing the Screecher. But maybe that actually helps them decide not to block this. I'm going to offer. Oh, they snapped it off.
That was a case where I'm happy to trade here because we know about Subtle Strike. If they Subtle Strike away one of our one toughness flyers and make a 3-3 flying lifelinker, that is so bad. I'm really happy to take that trade. What's up, Chief? That'll help us get this Serpent out. Uh, at 10 life, can we start attacking with a Screecher, or do we need to threaten one of their threes with it? I think we still need to threaten their three, so I'm going to stay uh, stay conservative. You still like sending? Math wants to be aggressive. We do need to get him dead. At some point, we have to not play around their possible removal. What's up, Hippie Cheeto? But now we get a Gear Seeker. That's cool. If things stay stable from here, we win, right? I just don't know if they do. Ugh. Well... Getting less and less stable the wider they get without us having something else to play. But I think we can send the Serpent this turn, knowing that if they come up with a crackback, at least we get to ice over. Um, we are closer and closer to like... Yeah, the colony does lower their clock, so I like that. And then, and yeah, then we can uh, ice over the colony, but I don't think they're attacking with the colony. We'll see. What, what do they come up with as an attack here? What do they come up with? Maybe we're just dead. And But that kind of speaks to why Math wanted to be attacking with the Screecher. Like, we are so on the verge of having this tilt back the other way badly for us. That's amazing. Um... But do we run it? Let's see, we have four, five, six, seven. If we do the unblockability, th that's all we've got. Or we can take a turn to demolish and ice over. We can play ice over would be preemptive. Uh, if we kill the reach, we can get them to one, but that's not zero. If they don't have removal, we do. Let's see, let's see if we survive crack back with one piece of removal. Let's do that test. So we send in, we have three blockers. They kill our best blocker. We have two blockers. They send in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We block two of them, the three and the three. We still take 11 and die. So. That's an interesting line from Rob. Leave the serpent back. I still think we just leave ourselves dead to removal in that case, though. Uh, that's my problem there. If we if we if we try the play where we send, we kill something and send Screech the S S serpent instead, we're still taking ten on the crack back against removal. So it doesn't really change anything i think we're at the point now of saying are we more likely to win by demolishing something here and trying to stay secure for another turn or just going for it um i am going to go for it we are dead to removal but i am owning it I'm hap I'm fine with whatever happens now because I, I thought it through the best I could with the time I had and came up with a play that made sense to me. And it looks like it's going to work. We're going to put the highest toughness we have on the trampler and then start trying to pick off the uh, three-powered stuff that we can. So th that's the clean, clear block here. Let's see if it works. All right, we made them have it, and they didn't. Good work, gang.
I mean, a side benefit of thinking through your lines and understanding the risks you're taking is that when it fall, when it doesn't work out, it's less tilting, right? Like if we had, if Oppo had destroyed our creature and killed us, I would have been like, it almost makes me happy that I called it, you know, called it, we're dead, right? Um, and when you can think through your plans that way, then when you execute your plan, you know where it's weak. And if it happens, you understood the risk you took. Yeah, that one was a tight match. No blue yet, but I like keeping this. We got our splash, maybe one of our best cards in our deck waiting to be cast off the splash. And we have an Aether Poisoner and a Salvager with any land. And if they go small, we're gonna get them. Fool, you're playing a different kind of game. Good luck with that. All right, third land in hand means we have Salvager guaranteed. Now we just need to see some island action to feel like we're in great shape. And we do have an alternative to drop. We can play the construct, but I like poisoner still. I'm gonna do poisoner. One of the reasons I'm doing poisoner is one possibility here is that they only have a one toughness creature on board at the end of this turn. And if we ascend in with the Poisoner, they may go for a trade. They're going to, quote, trade their Druid for our Poisoner, and we can make Obsolete to save it. Um, I'm going to say no blocks, though, although maybe we don't mind trading that off here. Eh, no blocks. They're playing green. They're probably gonna get bigger than this. Let's let's wait till, hey, there's our prism. That's gonna draw us a card. It's gonna start letting us play blue things. Uh, but we're gonna go for the salvager play here. Uh, Ice over is not good, but it is doing a job in our deck of help us not die to early aggression. It's got a very specific job that it's doing in the deck, and that's why it's here. And yeah, let's go Salvager now. We draw a basic land off the Prism. We can two spell next turn. We could also offer the Poisoner, but I don't like offering it for the Familiar. We're gonna leave Poisoner back on D means we might not get a servo off of the poisoner, but we have other things that use energy, so that's okay. No blocks here either. That's not where we want to trade. Oppo just dumping their hand. We're gonna prism here and hope we find a land. Land. Well, in a way it was a land. But I think we need to salvage the prism here and get this to 3-3. Three, three. So it at least threatens to block familiar and chaser. I'm also willing to let the prism go because with the Renegade map fetching an island, we'll have all of our colors. Yeah, you do a no attack, no block when the job of your death toucher is to get bigger, bigger game, right? Ether Poisoner's like, I'm saving myself for a bigger fight, young man. 
like against a Malfist revolutionary that's getting out of hand. Yeah, but if we draw on ETB, here, someone was suggesting we could have played the implement and used it to draw last turn, but my play involved, um, sorry, it involved playing the prism, and then if we naturally draw a fourth land, we play the fourth land and we get to construct. That would have been the, the dream, so that's why I was trying to do that. Demolition, we're gonna go fetch uh, fourth land. Get our island. Uh, this is where ice over is not the worst. We can ice over the most problematic creature, which is really the ether chaser, and then play construct or malice. I'll play construct to look to trade for the familiar or hold off the other stuff. Can also just hold down the familiar. Trouble is, Ether Chaser can attack through our other play. That's true. Never mind. We do, uh, I should I should uh, just make obsolete, huh? Um, that's a good point. Let him uh, send in. In fact, I'm just gonna let him send in next turn. Good call, Rob. We will obsolete. They'll probably make another. Uh, 1-1 one, one with the chaser, which is why I'm waiting for them to send in. And then we ice over, yes, then we ice over familiar or druid after that. Probably familiar so they don't get the death trigger without sacrificing it. And they only deal one point of damage here. It is. That's why that's why I think it's a main deck card. The fact that it's an instant means it can be a combat trick. All right, they got a pretty good follow, but honestly so do we with the uh, daring demolition. We just have to take another 3 from these two, but they're out of cards. So I actually like our chances here. We have all the options, but I'm going to start with Ice Over on the Familiar and uh, Chief of the Foundry on blocks. That just maxes our mana. Don't really mind that either. Let's blaze on. Basically a free attack for them. With our hand, I'm gonna call the bluff. We're at seven life, I don't wanna drop low. Touch, I have the touch. We're gonna hold the touch, play everything else, and then uh, play touch next turn for the attack. Let's go construct first. Screecher. It's action. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I probably don't need to cast this, huh? I'm just being... Uh, in fact, maybe we just implement... Yeah, we're going to implement and pass. I agree. We have uh, Oppo didn't show anything to finish off the Cloud Blazer when they attacked the Druid into it, so they need to draw something. We are going to go ahead and let him find an answer to the Construct to get any damage through with it. 
the druid. And there you go. That's why we waited. Now we can die young, the actual threat, instead of the not really a threat. And do that for two. And then touch the implement. And now we just leave the construct back to block and send in our seven per turn here. Love the rhino, but it's a little coming up, going to come up a little short here. Uh, four, five, six, seven is not eight, so we don't get to spell, but we get to attack with Implement and Cloud Blazer and then drop a Serpent that might just induce the scoop. All right. Gear Serpent might be the biggest delta between how the card reads and how good it actually plays. Or it certainly was in the original format. Um, and it's showing its worth in this one, too. So, really pretty sweet looking red green aggro here. What are we doing about that? Anything else? Again, I totally forgot, but we're gonna bring <laughs> we're gonna bring in the Mastodon again. And uh, we could splash, we could even bring in like that. But I think same same move, toss the select, keep the trade wins, add the Mastodon. And then I don't know about anything else. Yeah, I'm worried, Jim. That's a, that's a deck that looks pretty good against us. But we do have, you know, if we can find the uh, obsolete again, we did have a lot of tools to obsolete them. The chaser, I guess, I mean, maybe there wasn't as one toughness filled as I thought. Maybe that was the other oppo. Anyway, run this back. Well, we'll try and not lose to the old farting wolf. It seems like a rough way to go. Stinky, humiliating. How did I get here? What's become of me that I'm about to die to an old farting wolf? Flooding a bit here. Let's see what we can find. Uh, scary card, really. Trade winds doesn't hurt, though. Eventually, it'll probably help us out. I mean, I'd rather... There's other cards I'd rather have, but at least it's not a land, I'll tell you that. That's a land, unfortunately. Now we're going to go... Uh, we can go Salvager. Eat the Prism. It takes away our Blazer mana, but... Makes a 3-3. Three, three. Trouble is, 3-3... Three, three, well, 3-3 three, three does trade with a Brawler, even if it gets plus 1, plus 1 till end of turn. Um, so... Salvager eating Prism is an option. So is Chief and Hold. Just uh, accept another big smack and see what we can come up with next turn. But it's not like we follow up Chief with anything particularly exciting. So I'm going to go with uh, Salvager... Eat... And uh, actually try and block that Brawler. Rough here, though. We got three land out, four more in hand. Seven land is not what we want. Okay. Artifact or creature means we can ice this over after it gets one attack in. Potentially we wait and trade wins that. We could probably set him back pretty heavily if we did that. Uh, trade wins the crusher, but I'm willing to just basically play the foundry to induce an attack, and then next turn we have ice over with ether trade winds up, or another uh, three drop if we find one.
expecting them to crew the crusher with the brawler and then we can just ice over the crusher take that out of the con out of the game plan gets us to 10 though on the way that's no joke but i'm not gonna chump when we have a long-term plan for it here in ice over Scrapper Champ is interesting and probably is a nice trade wins play of some kind. But we're going to start with icing that over. Can't really deal with a 6-6 six, six cracking in with this team. We can bounce it, but of course, replaying it just re-gives it the, uh, the oomph anyway. But here, I think we uh, block with the Salvager and uh, try and trade with the Brawler and send back the Champ. Maybe even for a land here so that we don't have to replay the Chief. And yeah, I'm going to do that. Game three, you say? Well, we did say this was not an easy looking matchup for us. One nice thing here, though, we can uh, take six, go to three. Be very uncomfortable about that, but then we do have Die Young for the Scrapper Champ. But then we're chumping. I don't know. We need to find a three drop off the top that handles the cavalry. I don't know. Looks looks pretty grim for us, gang. That's actually okay. Now we, if we get a demolition, we're gonna, I mean, we have to take this. It's ridiculous, but we take this and hope that we find a uh, demolition to kill this. And then, uh, then we have blocks at least and we're not dead. In fact, we can two spell, we can demolition and die young. Although we can't really, there's nothing to die young here. Anyway, point is no blocks. See if we can find something off the top to deal with our situation. Thank you, War Furnace. 15 months. Awesome. Come on, demolition. Mm. That is not it. We are so dead. Again, though, we had a plan. I like it when we have a plan. I don't know if that plan was good enough. Uh, we kill the 6-6. Six, six. We kill the 7-7. Seven, seven. We kill the 2-2. Two, two, and we still have a 1-3 and a 3-2. Three, 3-3 two, three, three coming after us. I think we were dead anyway. But we said this deck looked good, and I, I don't like our matchup, honestly. But we will do what we can. Maybe we get a nice curve out of our own here and make it work. But I don't see bringing in anything else, so let's run it. It's what I took out, Scott, to bring in just a big creature for the ground, which I like a little bit better. I don't know. Going down a card to bounce their big thing, the tempo might be worth it, but it is a tempo loss. And we do have the ether trade wins in, so we didn't cut all of our bounce. Oh, I really want to pick up this game and get some gems out of this. This is one game for a thousand gems, everybody. A thousand fake. 
MTGA gems, so, you know. But it's a thousand of something that we're playing for. Whoa. I like to think of it as a thousand gem game myself. Thousand gems sounds a lot more impressive. All right, Wolf. Where are you? Sideboarding away, apparently. Eh, I don't need to make that rant. You all know that rant. Although, here we go. This is the kind of start we were looking for. Obsolete maybe gets him with something. This would have been the tempo bounce spell we were talking about, so we'll see how that plays. Whether we would rather have bounce your thing, bounce your own thing. So I'm kind of hoping Oppo comes up with the 1-3 mana elf, uh, mana dork, because then next turn we get attack with Poisoner with the obsolete up, and we might be able to get him. I don't know if they're willing to give that up or not, but I suppose if they are... So I'm going to send in and offer the Poisoner, and then decide what to do from there. By making a 1-1, we can hold, block the Brawler with the 1-1 and Obsolete. That's one thing we can do. We could also uh, Prism here, but I like Obsolete here. I like the Obsolete play of block Obsolete and trade half of our Poisoner value for a, and a Obsolete for a Brawler. Oh, that's true. Well, let's see if they, let's see if they pump. Good call. So maybe that won't work. And maybe I should have just played Plunder or Prism. But we'll two spell next turn. Good call, I forgot that it was gonna get bigger. Rhino is scary, we're gonna leave that back and threaten the Poisoner with it. But we do get Prism into Plunderer here. Is there any worth in keeping the obsolete? Not really, this is gonna get big no matter what. So yeah, we're just gonna do the uh, two spell turn I was talking about. And hope that uh, Poisoner lives to take out the Rhino. But this is a heck of a 2-3 for this deck. This is gonna be tough for us to beat, honestly, gang. A uh, Brawler into Rhino into now Revolution. It's not looking good for us, gang. But to that end, I think we just got to do this here. Take out the brawler while we can and know that we are a turn. You know, we take one more smack from the rhino, but then we can land a mastodon and try and stabilize. Scott, you don't like this? You want to try and stabilize with the Serpent? Well, some are saying stabilize with Serpent, but the thing is, um, can we even cast that? We still need two blue. This isn't untapping, so I don't know how we're Serpenting next turn. So I, I think we got to do this. But as they say, not dead yet. We have stabilization plays in hand. The question is how good are Oppo's cards in the top of Oppo's library? 
Yeah, Prism makes the other blue once we untap. But what we were talking about is that we don't get to do that until too late. Like, we, we didn't really have the time, I don't think. Four five is blockable with our four five or killable with our five six. So we just have to take the smack here. And again, cross fingers, cross fingers on. I mean, I could save a point, but we really don't want to do that. It's not worth a point. No follow. Oh, are they going to play something else? That would be pretty devastating if they come up with any kind of aggressive two drop here. Okay, at least it's not an aggressive one. So maybe it's actually better that this isn't a better card, <laughs> but uh, that's rough. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Uh, four, five, six. Too bad we don't have time to implement that last card away. I bet it's something reasonable, but we're going to go ahead and uh, Serpent and hope it's enough. We're just crossing fingers here. We've done what we can. We identified Oppo had a deck that was pretty well matched against us if they got a good start, and they did. So I'm kind of liking that we're even in this, and we'll see if we can uh, make it a game still. Magic comes down to this a lot. Here's my stabilization play. Is it good? Dot, 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 dot. Is there a five damage spell in the format that I'm... There must be, right? That's the only thing that makes sense. Oh, revolting? Yeah, trying for the revolt. Good point. Yeah, we say no blocks. Revolt, yeah. Well, we can screech for a legit blocker and implement and strip the final card, or we can hold up obsolete, or we can drop a mastodon and have a 4-5 and a 5-6. Um, and if that was their play, I think that's probably right to just do this. Don't you agree? If that was their play last time, I think it's got to be elephant time. They didn't show a way to kill the serpent, so this is probably going to be a good blocker for us, too, and make them draw something. And they might, uh, if they get that bite spell, they could do something after after blocks that would that would hurt. I mean, we're in a, we, we have to block now. We, we don't get to play around anything anymore. All right, that is great. So great. Another land. What about, let's uh, play this implement and sack it. Let's get this last card out of their hand, make them show it. And then we might have a play with uh, Mastodon attack with Vigilance and Obsolete up. We also might find something with this draw. Probably a land, but no. Let's find out. Oh, hello! Hello, indeed. All right, well, now we are not sending nothing. And the question is do we hold obsolete or screecher? I think we go screecher and add to our blockers. That was amazing. What an implement to get this off the board before we put down a Screecher. Screecher threatens the small rhino and the druid. Serpent threatens the big rhino and Mastodon the cavalry, so we look pretty stable. And then, yeah, we can Prism for white to start swinging away with a 4-5 and really punish them for bad blocks in that instance. Looks like they're still going for some sort of revolt reward. Is it another Lifecraft Cavalry, do you think? 
I think we say they can have this too. Because they drop another cavalry, I still want to send in the Mastodon and make them block right. Maybe. I think then it's trading one of those for one of those. Maybe we hold now. Let's see what we draw. Well, that's not a very good draw for us. And I can send in Mastodon, and then what happens? Send in Mastodon. If they single block with the Thriving Rhino, we wreck them. If they double block with anything, we are two for oneing ourselves. So I immediately no longer like the play. We could start hitting in the air, but boy, that's dangerous. We are saying we hit in the air, and we're saying we can block this and this, but everything else gets through. That's four, five, six, seven. Then we're just dead, unless um, uh, then we are forced into an obsolete, which would then shrink it down from lethal to not lethal, and we might blow them out. I think it's a risky thing, but um, but actually, we I think we do want to entice an attack from them, so I'm with you. I'm going to send in the Screecher because we want to use Make Obsolete to mess up their attack. This is risky, though. They add anything to this, and we're kind of dead. But it, to them, probably looks like we are just dead. And then we go, still just doing this and this. Doesn't change my blocks. It just uh, changes whether or not we're dead. We go to one instead of dead. Come on, deck. Will you give us something, please? We have card draw. How about card draw? How about cloud blazer? My kingdom for a cloud blazer? Let's blaze on, baby. Come on. Ugh. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, we're gonna bounce back our own prism to get more value out of the prism. And we're gonna coax them into another attack. No, I want him to try and attack again, because then we get him again, right? We go... Yeah, we can Vigilance it up. Let's do that for sure, right? And then my question is, can we send the Screecher? If we send the Screecher and they swing away, we go here, here or whatever, and then bounce and take, and we're still dead. So we can't actually send the Screecher. We'd be dead. But we can Vigilance attack. Uh, let him draw a card, that's fine. Uh, my hope is that they do the math here, know that we're at one, and that we're on top decking, and that they should be able to, quote, swing away and win. So we hope to really get them here. Probably putting Screecher on Rhino, Serpent on Cavalry, Mastodon on Familiar, and Bounce the Druid. They're playing it patient. That's fine. This is less fine. Uh, if we... Vigilance and attack, what are their options? They could... Yeah, actually, vigilance attack is good. Either they take it or they commit the cavalry to a block, which we can disrupt with trade wins. Our worst case is that they come up with block with everything, in which case that's actually not great for us, but I don't think they're going to risk that here. I would be surprised if they risk the full-on full, full -on block everything, so I'm going to go for this. <laughs> Thank you.
But your friend here is only mostly dead. Well, forcing the block now probably means they maybe are coming up with another cavalry or something, but uh, let's, yeah, we'll block here. Let's see what they've got. Maybe it's a, uh... okay, it's another cavalry. That's actually fine. Again, we get to get them with the trade winds next turn. Ooh, right. that's interesting, too. I still like our spot, especially if we can draw something not a basic land deck. How about that? What about not a basic land? All right, that is not a basic land. We do get to draw a card. We don't get to discard. They don't discard, but I'm still going to do this. We get to draw off of it. And then Ice Over helps us uh, after the Trade Winds keeps us alive. Now I'm not going to attack with a Mastodon so that it looks like the Mastodon attack was just an offer to trade for the Cavalry last, cavalry last time. Because uh, I want to destroy them. I want to destroy them with Aether Trade Winds. Was it a punt? Hmm. I don't know. You can tell me what the better line was, but I like where I'm at. Maybe there was a better line I missed, but... I like, uh... I like encouraging them to try to get us. And then we get them instead. So what was your play, though? That's interesting. We could just, um, well, now we kind of have to send it back. That's fine. So this is, uh, this is the best result. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I like that. Okay. That's the, that's the play I missed. You, I was not seeing what y'all were seeing, but what chat saw that I didn't is that if we had, Main phase trade wins, we could have gotten them to discard whatever they bounce. Good point. I just missed that. Uh, as it is, we're going to trade wins here out of necessity. And hope we find extra action, because now we're actually at the point where we really do need to um, find something. That is something, let me tell you. I'm going to go Prism first, though. Classically, D, I think it was definitely a punt not to think about it, right? We could have thought about it, and we didn't. Um, and that's my issue. Expertise is interesting. We could do this into Ice Over, but I think we just want to demo, uh, demolish the 6-6. Six, six. And we can... Now I like uh, sending the Mastodon again because if they if we do one for one for the cavalry, the expertise gets the rest of their creatures. Um, it does not get them if they send the Rhino, but I think it's worth it. I can't vigilance. I disagree. Yeah, I don't want to do both. I'm going to hold the expert expertise. I was thinking about it, but I think we're, we're good here. Still dead to removal, which is not great. I mean, we are on the edge here, but we're still attacking. And we're trying to find our way to a win. So I like how we're playing here. Yeah, I guess I could have played the land. No reason not to. Go wide, go wide! Yes! So, should have played the land. I, I shouldn't sandbag land with uh, all the card drawing in this deck, but 10 mana. Uh, I 
It's not lethal though, but it's a uh, great play. Attack with Flyer alone, maybe Mastodon. Trouble is they might put a bunch on the Mastodon. Yeah, we're just gonna attack with the Flyer and Expertise. I was trying to find some other line, but there really isn't one. Not that it makes any sense to me at any rate. Come on, expertise for a thousand gems. No removal, removal, I don't know. I think we got there. Do we get there? Oh. Yeah, you can put that there. That doesn't win you target game though. We're not dead yet. We're not done yet though, because now we don't have attacks without, we need a blocker or we still don't have this. Uh, we haven't won yet, though. Yeah, that's a blank. We're still dead to removal. We can't attack. Um, if we send in everything, the Mastodon's an easy block, and then we lose to the crackback. Hanging in. Did we, But then we might be dead. I, I, uh, I can't remember if... Did I miss a serpent attack? Really? Maybe. Construct is nice, though. Uh, it's going to give them options, too, but we got to play it. We got to play it. Yeah, Jim's calling out the ice overs not being good here. But again, the reason we're playing it is because of what it does for our deck on turns two through four, not for what it does for our deck on turns 19 through 20, you know? Die young, fine, keep. Yeah, no, it's it's not great. It's whether it's bad or just not great is open to your interpretation, but I've never argued that it's great. It just does our it does a very specific job for this deck. I didn't notice Oppo's scry. Did they go top or bottom? I don't like putting ourselves dead to removal when we have a great spot now. Because uh, now they should be dead. And we're going to go for it. Uh, they bottomed, so this has, this has to be a top deck instant that stops us. And if they do, I'm just going to salute and say we missed our five grand. I might as well uh, activate, though, for what that's worth. It doesn't really matter. If they have an answer to this, we're going to lose. If they don't have an answer to this, we're going to win. It's, it's that simple. All right. Well, we didn't get three wins today, but we lost our opening match, stuck with it, came back for two more wins to get to a thousand gems. We were stuck on one against a very aggressive trample heavy red green deck for a long time. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I was gonna, I was ready to lose that game. I was ready to get no gems out of this and just tell you all, hey, uh, we didn't end up with gems, but that's why we play, right? There were some fun games with really interesting decisions. I missed some stuff. Um, just goes to show, you know, I, I've often said that uh, that one of the unexpected benefits of streaming that I discovered when I became a streamer is that it's really good for my magic game to have dozens, if not hundreds of people watching what I'm doing and, and giving me feedback on what you know, where I could be doing things differently. Because the trouble with, you know, failure is a great teacher, but if you don't know you failed, it's not teaching you anything. So for example, uh, it took me chat explaining a couple times before I understood even what 
people were talking about as the alternative line to the one that I took. I took a fine line. It was it was defensible, but I didn't even see the other line and talk about it. And I wouldn't even have known that I missed a line if I wasn't streaming and didn't have chat telling me uh, what they're seeing. So I don't know, keep that in mind. Uh, it's one way that uh, watching your own games can be helpful. If you want to come back, like if you had some incredible game that you narrowly lost and you're trying to figure out where, where did I go wrong, you might save those replays. And uh, I, not that this has replays, but you, know, you can record your own games and stuff if you wanted. Uh, you, uh, there also might be step through game log type replays, not sure. But regardless, point is, sometimes you catch your own mistakes going back and watching your own stuff. I have this benefit of having dozens of people catching my mistakes on the fly. And then it allows me to at least see what I missed and give myself a better chance to not miss it next time. You know, it's hard to say that, oh, that I specifically missed casting, casting Ether trade wins in the context of a discard spell, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it like that might never come up again, but it's still one mistake in the mental chamber that's gonna help me not make the mistake next time if I can uh, own it and earn it. Whoa, Gontac. That was a, that was a great match. A lot of, lot of crazy situations, top decks, tough choices. Can we get him with this? Can we get him with that? And sitting there on one for like, you know, we, we basically had, uh, we had several turns there where we acknowledged that if you drew removal, we were just dead. But uh, we got there, got there, good games. And claim this prize. Also gonna make a note of this result in my spreadsheet. That's right here. For those of you who don't know about my spreadsheet, I use it to track my results, but it also contains an EV calculator if you're curious what Q provides the optimal return on investment for you. You can use that calculator to find that out. It doesn't necessarily uh, tell you the best return on fun, but if you're just looking to know based on how much I win and how much I value things, what the gem slash gold EV is, we can do that for you. This was a traditional draft of KLR. We were uh, blue black splash white. We went two one. We paid zero gold and 1,500 gems and got a prize of 1,000 gems and no grind. And we called it, what, Blazing Expert Blazer? Something like that. Nice. All right. Gonna say goodbye to our YouTube friends. Maybe I should have said goodbye before I updated my spreadsheet, but it's a good reminder for my YouTube friends that you can check out my spreadsheet too. That's in the YouTube notes as always. And if you wanted to do some EV calculation of your own, or you can just copy my spreadsheet, clear it out of content, and then uh, start using it to track your own results. You could do that too. There's a lot of good third-party tools that do it also, but I like the, first, I don't trust that any given third-party tool is gonna be there next week. And second, it lets me manage my own info. So I like doing my own spreadsheet, but there's also good tools out there for the lazy who want, uh, who want someone to do it for them. So keep that in mind. And thank you for hanging out for another good one there, uh, YouTube. Hope you, hope you like that. I, we didn't get 3.0, but I, I love that. There was a lot of interesting decisions throughout that event, which is why we play. So cool.